All right, going to show you three non-dispensational contradictions, three big contradictions for non-dispensationalists. First contradiction, keeping the Sabbath or not keeping the Sabbath. Exodus chapter 20 verse 8 says, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Exodus chapter 21 verse 15 to 16 says, six days may work be done, but in the seventh day is the Sabbath day of rest, holy to the Lord. Whosoever doeth any work in the Sabbath day, he shall surely be put to death. Whereas Wherefore, the children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath to observe the Sabbath throughout their generations for a perpetual covenant. Back in the Old Testament, the Jews were required to keep the Sabbath. Now, is this the case today? Well, it's not. Because in Romans 13, 9, Paul lists the commandments for a New Testament Christian and he does not mention keeping the Sabbath. Romans 13, 9. For this thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not, or thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, thou shalt not covet. And if there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in the saying, uh, namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Um, he didn't mention keeping the Sabbath. So what is it? There's a dispensational change there. But if you're non-dispensational, I, I guess we're supposed to still keep the Sabbath then. Big problem right there. Contradiction number two. Gospel of the kingdom or the gospel of Jesus Christ? Which gospel is it? Jesus Christ was preaching the gospel of the kingdom. Matthew chapter 4 verse 23. And Jesus went about all Galilee teaching in the synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and hearing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. Matthew 9.35 And Jesus went in about all the cities and villages teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. Well, here's a problem though. Paul never preached the gospel of the kingdom. Paul was preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. First, or 2 Corinthians 10.14 for we stretch not ourselves beyond our measure, as though we reached not unto you. For we come as far as uh, as to you, also in preaching the gospel of Christ. Romans 15, 9. Through mighty deeds and wonders, by the power of the Spirit of God, so that uh, from Jerusalem and round about into Isolium, I hope I'm saying that right, I have fully preached the gospel of Christ. Um, Paul didn't preach the gospel of the kingdom. But Jesus Christ preached the gospel of the kingdom. So are they, is, is one of them preaching a false gospel, or is there a dispensational change there? I'll tell you what, there's a dispensational change. They went from preaching the gospel of the kingdom to the cross happens, and then they're preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ for salvation. The gospel of the kingdom is not for salvation. The gospel of the kingdom is Jesus Christ presenting the kingdom of heaven to the Jews. So, you, But if you're, if you're non-dispensational, I guess one of them is preaching a false gospel then. You know, big contradiction there. Contradiction number three, animal sacrifices or no animal sacrifices. Exodus, Exodus chapter 29, verse 36 to 30, 37. And thou shalt offer every day a bullock for a sin offering for atonement, and thou shalt cleanse the altar when thou hast made an atonement for it, and thou shalt anoint it to sanctify it. Seven days thou shalt make an atonement for the altar and to sanctify it, and it shall be an altar most holy. Whosoever toucheth the altar shall be holy. Leviticus chapter 4, verse 2 to 3. Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, If a soul shall sin through ignorance against any of the commandments, of the Lord concerning things which ought not to be done, and shall do against any of them. If a priest that is anointed do or anointed to do sin according to the sin of the people, then let him bring for his sin which he has sinned a young bullock without blemish unto the Lord for a sin offering. They had to give animal sacrifices to atone for their sins. Well, this is not the case today because Acts chapter thirteen verse thirty eight thirty nine says. Uh, be it known unto you, therefore, men and brethren, that through this man preached unto you the forgiveness of sins, and by him all that believe are justified from all things from which ye could not be justified by the law of Moses. Colossians 2, 13-14 And you, being dead in your sins, in circum in, and the circumcision of your flesh, hath ye quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses, blotting out the handwriting of the ordinances, and that was against us which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. Titus chapter 2, verse 13 to 14, Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity, and to purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. We're not supposed to keep, we don't have to do the animal sacrifices today in the time of the Gentiles, because we're covered by the blood of Jesus Christ, but they're doing it back in the Old Testament. So which is it? Is there a contradiction, or is there a dispensational change there? There's a dispensational change. That once the cross of Jesus Christ happened, they're no longer doing animal sacrifices because the animal sacrifices, it could cover your sins, but it couldn't take away your sins. Only the blood of Jesus Christ can wash away all your sins. There's a dispensational change there. But if you're non-dispensational, I guess we're still supposed to keep animal sacrifices then. So those are some of the three of the, those are three of the many contradictions that non-dispensational heretics get themselves into. And the satanic agenda behind non-dispensationalism is they're preparing people to take the mark of the beast.
because if there's no dispensational change there, if salvation is not, I you know I cover this in another video, but if salvation is not, uh, if if salvation is by faith alone in the uh, time of Jacob's trouble, and there's no dispensational change there you can take the mark of the beast. And again, I covered this in another video, I'm not going to go through that in this video, but non-dispensationalism is a satanic agenda. It causes all kinds of contradictions in the Bible. And, you know, whenever atheists find so-called contradictions in the Bible, it's because they're, they're, they're crossing dispensational lines and lumping it all together. So, non-dispensationalism has many contradictions. These are just three of the many ones you'll find if you're non-dispensational. So don't be deceived by non-dispensationalism. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye. Thank you.